good evening all we are happy to welcome you all here today we discuss about patterning of siddha tracks first i would like to welcome our guest ms prem rajkumari she is a intellectual property lawyer having vast experience she providing legal consultancy service on various matters intellectual property rights including trademark patents copyrights and commercial matters she has advised business startups trademark applications and the patent registrations at the national and international levels she had work experience in high court of madras center for international trade and economic laws she presented the paper on international trade laws and the treaty interpretation on november 2020 brics and economics development on december 2020 competition laws and issues in cross borders transaction on december 2021 she is also the member of cbsc groups of legal studies on march 2019 she has awarded the crown lady of women once again i welcome you ma'am we are extremely hopeful that this section is also going to be great for siddha system welcome all good evening everyone good evening Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the brief intro. I have some uh, presentation to share with you. I hope I can share my screen, and we can go ahead with the topic. Uh, I hope you are able to view my screen. Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, very good evening. So, the topic for today's presentation is patenting Siddha drugs. Now, firstly, I would like to cover what are the basics of uh, granting a patent or getting a patent. Subsequent to which, we will go in detail on how to get a patent, how to draft a patent application, and so on. and followed by you can also ask questions in between or you if you feel like asking questions at the end of the session also you are welcome so firstly what is a patent a patent is a right granted to the inventor for a particular period of time now say a person has made a new invention he gets an exclusive right of licensing it using it or remodeling it for a period of 20 years according to the indian patents act now say there are uh, some inventions which are already in existence and a person would like to make a modification or an alteration of it sub subject to an inventive step being involved so that product is also patentable now the types of patent so there are two types basically one is a process patent and the other one is a product patent a process patent is one for which the particular process itself is being patented and a product patent is one in which the outcome of the process is being patented now the criteria for grant of patent by the indian patent office there are four criteria which the indian patent office will basically look into one is it should be novel second one is it should not be very obvious so non obviousness is very important third one is they should be an innovation of a product or a process and it should also involve an inventive step the last one is it should be used so it should be capable of industrial application so what is novelty novelty is that which is not publicly available so anything which is new is called novel i have also quoted certain provisions of the indian patent act but uh, if, you, if you want you can take a note of it i'm not going in depth because uh, i feel the audience is mostly uh, technical the next one is inventiveness so inventiveness is something which involves innovation and it should not be uh, obvious so non obviousness is an important criteria as i said process patents so the manner of manufacture 
Now say uh, there is a drug or a, uh, a new medicine that you are inventing. So the particular process itself can be patented, provided the process should be new and something should be added. It is, uh, it, it is not that just an uh, addition of an ingredient can be uh, patented. The next one is usefulness or the utility of the invention. This, this applies to both process as well as the uh, product patent. Now, uh, once a product is being invented, how far it is useful or, it is, or whether it is useful for industries or individuals or uh, public health, etc. Everything uh, is covered under the caption of usefulness or utility. And it is very important that the utility should be clearly mentioned while making a patent application. Now, there are certain restrictions on patentability. Now, certain provisions of the Indian Patent Act, which is section three to five, it uh, uh, speaks about or it portrays on the restrictions regarding patentability. Now, for example, uh, innovations which are related to atomic energy, uh, which uh, uh, falls under the Atomic Act and it is not patentable. There is a provision in the Indian Patents Act, which is uh, section three, and it broadly speaks about inventions that are not patentable. Now, these are the following inventions which are not patentable. Now, an invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to well-established natural laws. So, anything which is contrary to the national laws available in India is not patentable. I am just covering only the topics which are uh, related to your subject so that we can leave out the rest of the ones. Now, an invention the primary or intended use or commercial exploitation of which could be contrary to public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice to human, animal or plant life or health or to the environment. So any invention which is contradicting to the natural environment of public health or morality of the laws of India are not patentable. The mere discovery of a scientific principle or the formulation of an abstract theory or discovery of any living thing or non-living substance occurring in nature. So as I said, any discovery, so which does not involve any innovative step or inventive step cannot be patentable. So it is just a discovery of a substance and that cannot be patentable. The mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance or the mere discovery of any new property or new use for a known substance or the mere use of a known process machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactor. So it a, a, just a discovery which does not involve any innovative step. If you have only added one ingredient, as I said before, it is not patentable because that will be hit. That will be hit under the concept of obviousness. A substance obtained by a mere admixture resulting only in the aggregation of the properties of the components thereof or a process for producing that substance. Now, um, if there is already a product existing and there is only an addition of a component to it, then that addition, the process itself is not patentable and the product also is not patentable. The mere arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of known devices, each functioning independently of one another in a known way. So just an arrangement of something, you know, when there is already there and it is just an arrangement, so that is also not patentable.
method of agriculture or horticulture. So agriculture methods are all not patented. Any process for the medicinal, surgical, curative, prophylactic, diagnostic, therapeutic, or other treatment of human beings, or any process for a similar treatment of animals to render them free of disease or to increase their economic value or that of their products. So here, if there is a process that is related to medicine or surgery or diagnostic or therapeutic or other treatment for human beings or animal health is not treated. Sorry. Plants and animals in whole or any part thereof other than microorganisms, but including seeds, varieties and uh, species and essentially biological processes for production of propagation of plants and animals. So which is already there existing in nature. So all these are not patentable. Now this has got a lot of exemptions which I will also be covering during the lecture. A mathematical or business method or a computer program per se algorithms. So this is also not patentable. A literary, dramatic, musical or artistic work or any other aesthetic creation whatsoever, including cinematographic works and television productions. So this will be covered under copyright and it is not patentable. A mere scheme or rule or method of performing mental act or method of playing game. So this is also not patentable. A presentation of information. So any presentation which is only informatic, so that is not patentable. Topography of integrated circuits. So again, this is all covered under physics and this is not patentable. An invention which in effect is traditional knowledge or which is an aggregation or duplication. So um, yeah, I would like to give an example of um, Tulsi Taylor. So Tulsi Taylor is already there and it is also um, available <clears throat> for, for centuries. So that is not patentable. But if there is an addition or um, whereby uh, the use of tulisitalum is extended for curing some other disease, then it can be patented. Uh, what are the essentials of a patent? Now, a patent should have a detailed view of the invention. Now, this is very important as it is helpful in uh, determining the essentiality of the patent of the product. Now, this patent also protects the interest of the inventor. Now, there are two kinds of patent. One is a provisional patent and the other one is a complete patent. Now, now for example, you're making a process or a product. Now, that is not complete, but you would like to file an application. So, straight away, you can go ahead and file a provisional patent application. Now, this provisional patent application is valid for a period of about 12 months. Now, this 12-month period is available for you to complete your research and complete the, uh, the complete product or the process so, so that at the end of the uh, provisional application or the end of the expiry of the provisional application, you can file a specific complete specification giving the complete details of the product. So you will also be covered even before your uh, complete product or the complete process is available with you. Now, what is the procedure for obtaining a patent? Sorry. I think I went somewhere. Now, before an application is submitted, a patent search should be performed. Now, this patent search is performed and analyzed, wherein all the particular, all the um, applications relating to the particular invention is being sought from the uh, patent office. Now, after we get the search report, we analyze it, subsequent to which an application is being submitted. 
Now, once the application is submitted, the next step is the registry will uh, go forward for examination of the application. Now, if the registry has got any queries or um, objections, they would be posting the queries or objections subsequent to which we should be giving answers or replies to the uh, Indian Patent Office so that it will go ahead for uh, advertisement. Now, once this um, advertisement of the patent application is being done, then there would be a process called opposition. Now, in opposition, if there is a, 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 a as I said, just uh, like examination, if there is an objection to the grant of the patent, now that objection will be raised during opposition. Now, for opposition, hearings would be uh, given by the register uh, subsequent to the hearings and the uh, answers provided by us during the show cause hearings the grant or grant and sealing of a patent will be done now uh, i'm also briefly touching upon what are all required for getting a patent so that you can keep in mind at the time of making a patent application So a patent should broadly cover the title. The title should be as broad as possible so that there is no duplication of a patent application by another person. Now the opening description of a patent is very important because it should uh, touch uh, in a nutshell as to what is the uh, invention or the patent about. Prior art description. What are all the prior arts that is already available with respect to the subject? And what is the next innovative step that you have made in the application should be clearly demarcated and written in the application. Now, what is the object and statement of the particular invention, being pro be it product or process, should be clearly specified. Now, a detailed description, if it is a process patent, what are all the processes that are being followed? What are all the ingredients that are being uh, for, uh, being added? And in what quantity? What is the new innovative process that you have um, updated with respect to the innovation? And what is the outcome? Everything should be given in detail with the particular quantities also. And what is the claim that you're making is the last one that, can, uh, that should be mentioned in a uh, parent application. As I said, the title should be as broad as, uh, as possible so that your title itself should not, uh, should contain a, a series of all the matters that are related to the particular industry. But it should be as concise as possible. So a concise statement providing the crux of the invention. Now the entire scenario of the invention should be given in the title itself. So that whenever a search is being made with respect to a particular invention, it is only the title that is being captured. So the title should be as broad as possible. Uh, for example, a process, product and apparatus applied for, the title should accommodate all of this. If you're applying for a process patent, a product patent, and uh, you know, the complete uh, scenario of the entire process and the product should be covered in the title itself. The opening description or the uh, preamble of the invention. Now, uh, the background of what the issue is, what is the summary that you're providing, the usefulness of the invention, everything should be in detail so that a person who does not have any technical knowledge or specific knowledge with respect to the particular subject. So if any person uh, goes through the patent application, he should be able to understand what the invention is about. Uh, prior art references. A brief write-up of what is already available should be uh, discussed or it should be already uh, mentioned in your application. 
if there is a um, if there is an update of the prior art reference or if there is a, a working on the prior art reference now say for example as i said uh, about the tulasi telam issue the tulasi telam is already there and you want to make anything new or additional to this tulasi telam but involving various other steps now this tulasi telam is a prior art reference so this should be clearly mentioned in the application she said it increases the the credibility of the invention now uh, rather the the patent examiner should not get confused that this is already available uh, and you know for centuries and what is that you claiming so the prior art reference should be clearly demarcated so that it increases the credibility of the invention now they should also distinguish as to what is known and what is not so this tulasi tell Then is already known. We should have a demarcation of what is already uh, known to everybody and what is the new one that is uh, being pitched to everybody through the uh, patent application. Now, what is the object of a uh, patent application? Now, uh, the intention or purpose of the invention should be clearly uh, described in the application now it should demark the main or essential objects and the ancillary objects now you might have certain main objects as a cure of uh, certain diseases so that should be your main object of the uh, invention and it may also cure certain <clears throat> other diseases so that can be your ancillary objects so there should be a clear demarcation of the main objects and the ancillary objects now a statement as such is optional but it it, it just improves the um, it, it is just an addition to the patent application a detailed description of a patent is very essential now your invention should be mentioned very clearly step wise so that, so that a person a layman if he reads also should get the particular should should be able to understand so anybody with just the application should be able to follow the steps and make your product or the process so that is very important when you are uh, uh, filing a patent application now a detailed description so these are the conditions for a detailed description the description must be sufficient without making further inventions and the description must be fair and not unnecessarily be difficult to follow so any person who is just who has just got the patent application should be able to make it without your assistance so that is very important now what are all the patentable aspects of the invention so first is uh, as we already discussed all of this <clears throat> novelty inventiveness utility or usefulness the manner of ma uh, manufacture and the patentability according to the laws of india so manner of manufacture is the uh, process of manufacturing a particular uh, drug so that process itself can be patented provided there is an innovation in the process now some important points to just consider now you should have a uh, you, you should or uh, have a, uh, a complete idea of what your product or your process is about before making the patent application now for a provisional application also you should have sufficient idea or sufficient uh, uh, knowledge of for what your patent is being filed now you should envision it before drafting and if the invention fails to produce any promised result then the patent becomes invalid so the invention should always be capable of giving out the result that you're aiming at now this is just a small case study so that it will be easier for you to 
draft uh, or, or have an idea of before making a patent application. Though this is related to Ayurvedic formulation, uh, you can also take it as a reference for uh, Siddha formulations. A process of preparing plant-based Ayurvedic formulation for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Now this process, uh, an application has been made for this particular process. Now it should contain the background of the invention. So what this invention is about, and there is no specific and proven Ayurvedic medicine for this particular disease should be clearly established. And what are all the medicines that are available currently? Though it, may, uh, though it is in allopathy, and what are all the side effects that have been caused should also be mentioned in the application. The objectives of the in invention, the main object as well as the ancillary objectives. So the main object would be treatment with no side effects and ancillary object would be how delicious the, the drug is and how whether it is soluble, etc. can be your ancillary objects. The statement of the invention should be clearly established. The statement will be, say for example, a select ingredient from plant, which is Mucina pruriens. So, and it is being pulverized into a fine powder. Then antioxidant is being mixed, stabilizer with powder. Now all this should be clearly specified. A detailed description of the particular invention. Now say an active ingredient, selective active ingredients, which is, it's, even though it is mucina pruriens, uh, how it is being added to the particular uh, process or the product should be very clearly defined. And what are all the what are all the steps that are being for, uh, being followed, which is whether it is pulverization or being dried or how it is being mixed. Everything should be very clearly uh, mentioned in the application. Now, what is a claim? A claim is that for which you are, you are applying for a patent is a claim. It should be broad and what are all the steps or the processes that are being involved should be clearly mentioned. And what is the composition, what has been added and what quantity, etc. should be clearly uh, defined. Now, in the formulations, what are all the challenges in Siddha formulations? So basically, most of the Siddha formulations are already existing in nature. So anything that you want to, uh, so it, it is actually quite difficult for the, uh, uh, the patent office to grant a patent for basic Siddha formulations. However, if the Siddha formulation is able to convince the Indian patent office that this is being uh, uh, given for a particular disease, for which there is no medicine at all, then there is a chance for getting a patent. Now, any new innovative step that is being fo followed in the making of the particular drug or the uh, component, then it can be patented. So with this, I conclude. Any questions, you can uh, you, you feel free to ask. And I've also given my email ID. So if you want to uh, file a patent application or uh, anything related to patent, you can feel free to reach out to me. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the wonderful session. Just elaborate uh, how to find out whether our ideas have already been uh, patented or not. Because we should not repeat. Okay. So very basically, I would just say, you can basically Google to find out once you're already having the particular uh, invent, you can approach a professional patent agent so that a particular patent search can be on the database itself. And we will be getting you the what are all of the, uh, 
Recruits, Dr. Kuren himself, to share his insights. Any other questions? I, I think I missed your uh, last part. Can you repeat? Is it audible now? Yes, yes. A bit louder would be appreciated. Dr. Kuren himself, to share his insights with you. Sir, over to you. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Like uh, today's session is an eye opener, okay? Like, uh, thank you for the uh, speak uh, speaker. Um, ma'am, actually, I have few queries, okay? Please. Yeah. Like, uh, ma'am, is it mandated that we have uh, we have to go always uh, through the patent agent, okay? Uh, or because there are lots of government government of India facilitatory centers are there. Who is it directly uh, connecting with the patent office or the uh, wherever the uh, science and technology unit where they are handling? So uh, is it always mandate to go through a, a patent uh, agent? Uh, this is my first question. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, but first, uh, like uh, once it is uh, over, I will I will come up with the other questions. All right, all right. So it is not mandatory that you should always go through a patent agent, but it is advisable to go through a patent agent because a patent agent has already got experience in handling or drafting a patent application or a patent specification. Because for a newcomer, though they might be. Uh, you know, very good with their invention or their uh, be, be it a product or process, though they might have the exact technical knowledge, as a patent agent would be able to determine what is required and what is not required in a patent application. So that okay, but... the patent application does not get rejected. So that is why it is, though it is not mandatory, it is advisable to go through a patent agent. Okay, but actually here there is a two, uh, one question. Like for example, if there is any uh, like opposition raised by any of the opposite party or any any third person, because mm -hmm. the answer mainly given by the inventor only. Uh, mm -hmm. Because because what happened means, uh, recently two or three of my colleagues who who have applied for patent through a patent agent, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the material which was given by the inventor. Like mm -hmm. it was pursued by the patent agent in a different uh, orientation. Like, uh, uh, so it was like, yeah, the opposition came and uh, uh, later because they are all my colleagues also. So, so that is why the because catching a proper patent agent also it's uh, it's uh, important. Like because if we are opening the Google, there are a number of even in uh, thousands and. In 10,000, 20,000 people are there, like we filing IP, everything mm. for low cost, like that. And other people are coming. So, mm. is there any standard like a, a site where they are uh, like uh, giving the certification or authentication of the people who, who is a, a really acting as a uh, legal patent agent? Okay. So, I, I will, uh, in fact, divide your question into two parts and answer it in two parts. So, firstly, uh, for a reply to opposition, what you need to do is after a reply is being drafted by your patent agent, you should always go through the reply because you are the uh, inventor of the particular product or the uh, process. So you will be knowing it better than the patent agent. So whatever is very required and for whatever reason the opposition is being raised, you should, uh, you know, though the patent agent has drafted, it is very important that the inventor reads it and only after he is convinced, then tell the patent agent to go ahead with the filing. If there is any ambiguity or any misstatement given by the patent agent, is very, you know, it is very important for you to curb it at the initial level itself. Otherwise, it will lead to several complications in the, uh, during the uh, next stage of proceedings. Because once an application is submitted, it's submitted forever. So before submission only, you have the right to make changes. Now, a parent, if a patent agent is not entertaining the changes that you are suggesting, it is very important that you tell it to the patent agent and make necessary corrections. 
Now, regarding the details of the patent agent. Hello. Now, now is it okay? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, I hope you heard the answer for the last uh, last question. Or you want me to repeat? I repeat the repeat. Okay. okay. So, uh, before making the uh, filing, as in before giving a reply to the opposition raised by as in by the patent agent, it is very important that you go through the reply before it is being submitted. Because once an application is submitted, it is submitted forever. You cannot make changes uh, after it is submitted. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. Okay, okay. So it, it is very important that you read the reply before it is being submitted. So that is one part. The second part. Can you hear me? Is it okay now? Can I go ahead? Yes, sir. There seems to be some disturbance in the line. It is no one. Oh, okay, okay. So, if there are any uh, discrepancies in the reply given by the patent agent, you have every right to rectify it. You should also advise the patent agent that this is not the suitable reply for the opposition raised by the registrar because it is your invention and you would be knowing much more about it. So, it is. Uh, you know, it is advisable and it is very mandatory also, I would say, before filing any reply, you go through the reply only after you're satisfied with the reply given by the patent agent, you should give a go ahead to the patent agent for filing the reply. That is one part. Second part is the details of the patent agent are already available in the site, itindia.gov.in. And uh, we also provide uh, patent application services. We also uh, you know, uh, facilitate for filing patent applications. And uh, the details of the patent agent are already available in the website. So any details with respect to the patent agent, you can uh, get it from the website itself. Okay, okay, thank you. Welcome, any other questions? Because I shared the link late only. When you get up and sir, please unmute yourself and come forward to share your insights or ask your doubts. So please. Good evening, ma'am. Am I on? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I have wondered, uh, our invention was uh, already uh, came uh, uh, came as a newspaper article. Mm -hmm. uh, now, can we patent this? Uh, now, this is a broad question, but uh, you know, on an outline, I would just tell you because I I, I do not know what the invention is about, but still, I would uh, go ahead. So, even though it is only a newspaper article. What is that you have contributed? Now, say for example, it is already available in the uh, market and it is accessible also. What is that new thing that you have made? It should always pass the three tests. One is novelty, next one is non-obviousness, third one is inventive step, and fourth one is industrial application or usefulness. So all these four tests should be passed. Only then an application can be filed. Okay. And I've also given my uh, email ID. So any queries with respect to, you know, filing of patent, you feel free to email. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Specific details also. Okay. So over to you. Please unmute yourself, sir.
Dr. Nalathami sir, are you there? Dr. Vendapan sir? Okay. Ma'am, can you just uh, share your experience? Hello? Uh, am I audible? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I I think I'm quite late to join this uh, event because I, uh, I was uh, out there for another conference today. Uh, I, could, I could come only by now. But anyway, I think uh, a lot of useful points have been sh sh shared by the advocate, madam, uh, uh, just by uh, hearing by the la last two, one or two questions, I can understand that. Uh, maybe in the next time or after seeing the recording, I'll uh, recording the YouTube, I can come back once again and I can uh, ask the doubts to, through Dr. Maidhvi to the, to the advocate. For the time being, uh, uh, I, uh, for the time being, I will I just say congratulations for the event, uh, event both for the advocate, madam, and Dr. Maidri for conducting this. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just share your basic experience? I need a basic keynote on before starting patents, ma'am, because. I myself think it's a huge task indeed. So in my vision, it's a big uh, deal indeed. So can you just uh, make it simple, ma'am? Because we have elaborated. Uh, uh, can you can you repeat? repeat? I think I missed uh, I missed some for, part. For, for a beginner, what is your advice uh, to make ready for applying for a patent, ma'am? I need the basic things. Okay. So uh, before you apply for a, a patent, now say you have a new formulation. That new formulation should not be something which is already there existing, which is say, uh, shouldn't be a, a traditional medicine which is already available. Especially in Siddha, it is very, very important that you must analyze what your what is the innovation or what is the formulation that has been uh, invented uh, you know or specifically formulated by you so the first step is to identify what is the the new thing that you have come up with now, it should not be just you know adding components you know i'm adding uh, you know so, so and so compound a b c and d now this just admixture of chemical components you cannot get a patent for it it should always contain some innovative steps or inventive steps. If it contains inventive steps, then it, it can go ahead for a patent. Now, once you have uh, made up your mind or once you have done something, you know, you, you want to have a, a medicine for cure of certain particular disease, let's say for COVID also, you want to, you know, invent a, a formulation which cures COVID. Now, for that, what you need to do is, you need to firstly identify what is the, the particular substance that cures COVID. And you can consider it as the main component, but you need to add certain formulations because it is not that something you get in nature that cures COVID as such. So the particular formulation needs to be invented by you. Now, once that particular formulation is there, then you can go ahead for filing a patent application. It should not be just, you know, you, it is there, you add something and apply for a patent. It is not the case. You need to make certain new inventive steps. Now say pulverization. The pulverization is already there, but how are you making it? And what are all the, you know, it is it is not that certain components, you're just adding to the existing ones. It is You, you should convert it into some other form and then add it so that it becomes inventive. Uh, can you share the cost of that? No? Means I, I need that. What will be the cost for filing a patent till it is approved? Okay. Now the cost 
cost is it, the cost both the garment and the professional charges will depend on what, who the who is the person who is applying for a patent because different costs are there for individuals for small enterprises for institutions both garment cost as well as the professional cost uh, i can probably do something i can just share what is what will be the rough costing to your email id just after the lecture so that you can circulate to, to everybody also Mm. and the, the, because mm -hmm. it, it involves a lot of steps that is why i'm not able to you know tell it right away and the, the rough period for granting of a patent would be approximately 4 years mm -hmm. just after an application is filed okay how to find or not will we get any uh, mail uh, if it is approved or uh, we have to check the web Uh, uh, sorry, can you come again? Website. No, ma'am. Uh, should we check the websites or uh, will it be intimated through the personal mail that uh, it is approved or so? Okay. Now, after an application is being made, as he said. Now, if there are certain queries from the registry, they would be letting you know they would be getting back to us. It is not that uh, you know uh, they will be communicating it to the through the agent who has filed the application. so all the communications to the individual or the uh, small enterprise or the institution will only come through the patent agent from the registry and uh, you know it it is not that just after we file the application the application will be scrutinized and a, a patent will be granted that is not the case it has a lot it, it has quite got a series of steps to be followed so only after all the steps are being done then a patent will be granted which involves a, you know uh, examination publication in the journal and uh, you know uh, opposition and giving reply for the opposition and show cause hearing so after all of this only a patent will be granted so is it like madam is the 4 year waiting period is also in other countries also but are only in india is there any country which gives a patent in a faster time maybe one or two years uh in our, if all this filing of patent applications are all country specific so if you need to uh, you, if you require a patent in a particular country then you will have to file it in each particular country and the other countries some countries are faster some countries are uh, you know slower than us now this four year period is a tentative timeline you know 3 to 4 years though they might say that in 18 months you will be granting a patent that is not the case and practically it takes about 3 to 4 years it can be a little early also provided there are no objections and uh, you know no oppositions then it can be a little faster but still this is the approximate time period at least 3 years okay madam let's uh, take it for granted that i am filing a patent application and uh, mm. after uh, before getting the uh, patent somebody else start producing the drug claiming that they have found that they have invented that uh, mm. uh, what happens uh, uh, they start producing that particular drug or the, that particular machine before i get the uh, patent what happens in that scenario madam okay so uh... firstly the priority date so the date of filing of the application will be firstly freeze so that will be one of the evidence which you will have in your favor now if it is in the transition stage wherein you have not actually obtained a patent but you have already applied for a patent then you you of course have legal remedies you can file a patent infringe you, you cannot say it is a patent infringement suit but you can say that you have a right over the particular invention and go ahead with legal recourse remedies because only Thank when you, you when you are, only when you have a patent granted in your name you can go ahead with a patent infringement suit and also uh, claim for damages but uh, this is violation or this is like uh, copying your stuff so for that you can of course uh, go ahead for filing other suits but it is not a patent infringement suit but uh, you know claiming your right you can go ahead okay madam thank you point point taken madam thank you thank you ma'am thank you for answering ma'am is it the same procedure followed by uh, 
we uh, apply for any means uh, publishing any research article or review article in any journals so more or less the steps are same or it differs no no regarding publication of journal articles it is a it is altogether a, a, a different one because publication in journal will be covered under copyright only Uh, you know that has got, that has nothing to do with patents but say if you have a new write up then you can go ahead with registering your article or registering your write up with the the copyright office so any literary work uh, you know uh, you write something and diagrams etc photographs everything can be copyrighted ma'am uh, good evening ma'am yes yes yeah actually from this question i have a continuous uh, continuation of the question because yes, for please. example the for example i have came with the innovation mm. in one research and it it got published okay mm. Mm. it was published in 2013 mm. like uh, uh, like that time i have not aware about patent all these things but mm. uh, during the course of uh, doing the knowledge on patent i was informed mm. that uh, you can go for patent with this provided uh like you should uh, little bit you should either add or a uh, little bit you should modify the uh, thing so mm. like because why, why i am asking this means because that was a research paper that was copy like it was a copyrighted mm. so it is copyrighted in my name only can mm. i go further with the patent because it is no it is not other work it is my work only so how, how can i take it up further okay so firstly here i would like to give you a uh, a demarcation of what is copyright and what is patent now anything you write in a uh, you know you write as a research article that is covered under copyright now anything which you have invented you know it, it is in a tangible form then it is uh, you know capable of getting a patent for it now this copyright say Uh, you have already published it in a journal now a copyright will automatically arise even though you have not applied for a copyright but if you have applied for a copyright it gives you additional uh, protection so as soon as it is published a copyright will automatically exist for a period of 60 years from the life of the author so you always have a, now say for example you have already written somebody something and some other person wants to also write on the same lines he can of course use this but he cannot exactly copy it and then use it in his article but he can take the idea of it he can reproduce it in his own words and also give a reference to your article which you have already written so that reference should be given only then it is not called plagiarism otherwise it is uh, plagiarism and though india it is not very strict in plagiarism laws other countries are very very strict in plagiarism laws and it is of course uh, you know they, they consider it very serious it is not that you know somebody copies from the article produce, reproduces the same thing and gets an article published that is not the case it cannot be done at all and uh, for getting a patent with respect to this now say for example you have already written a research article you want to develop on that article and you want to have something which is invented through the article that of course you can go ahead and do it provided there is something new added to it okay ma'am okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so i think uh, in terms of say that uh, we have our own uh, classic foundations and if you are if, if we are willing to uh, do something innovative we can change its uh, dosage form or in terms of its type of uh, making it and uh, we can register it and uh, register it as a proprietary medicine so in that way uh, we can in uh, patent our innovation uh, like in ipr filing i think so okay now this uh, proprietary medicine is the one that i was talking about giving the example of tulsi telam so it is already there and it is also being used by us for centuries so that cannot be as such patented but if there is something added to it and if if say uh, tulsi telam 
is being used for treatment of cancer by uh, you know adding some other components to it through innovative methods then yes that can be patented otherwise as such tulsi telam cannot be patented i, I hope uh, i am little uh, clear on this uh right now are you dealing with any uh, files related to the system of medicine ma um as on date i do not but uh, we in fact have an application which is in process for, for uh, being uh, filed you know they are in talks uh, okay so ma'am okay ma'am thank you once the formulation is done then probably we'll go ahead okay ma'am thank you Uh, can you be a little louder, ma'am? I'm not able to hear. Apart from search, searching or surfing from a browser, is mm-hmm. there any other means like searching in the IPR website itself to find out uh, whether uh, no, uh, to find out whether uh, or uh, what are the patents so far done in Siddha field? From our field, okay. we want to search. Means okay. what is okay. the more? Okay. okay. Now this Google search that I was telling you is only a preliminary search for your understanding. Now, if you are really serious about the invention, if you already have something in hand, then probably you can uh, approach a, a patent professional for getting a proper search done. So what a patent professional will do is a proper search is being done on the entire. Uh, ip database and a series of results matching this is being given now once the results are being given then you can analyze whether your formulation is matching or it is already existing or it is a new one if it is a new one then you can go ahead with filing the application but it is always advisable to get the search report before filing the application so and one more Being a citizen of India, can I file uh, uh, yeah, or uh, file my innovative in uh, other countries' uh, patent website, ma'am? Yes, you can go ahead and file. Uh, we have this uh, Vipo. So from India itself, you can go ahead and uh, file patent applications in other countries. So there are a list of countries under the Madrid Protocol, which are uh, in the. Uh, you know in uh, vipo so world intellectual property organization so from india being uh, the pa- the parent country or the parent uh, country under which you will uh, you, you as an applicant will come under so if you have already filed an application in india with this priority application you can file uh, other patent applications in other countries from india itself so that particular uh, uh, parent application will go to those particular jurisdictions and if there are any oppositions or uh, objections from that particular country then we will have to look out for some particular patent agent in that particular jurisdiction uh, for giving suitable replies pa- part of it can be done from india but part of it you have to approach that particular jurisdiction patent uh, professionals okay. ऑर्गनाइजेशन and here we have the intellectual property board okay. in india so on filing or after approval of the patent mm-hmm. so is there any honor provided for that uh, is there any or should we apply for it honorarium i have heard from a seniors that uh, some honorarium is provided for approved uh, patents ma'am is it so or should we apply apply separately for the honorarium it should be applied separately and that is not uh, that is not from the patent office itself so that is uh, you know something which is absolutely different from the uh, office 
not related to uh, you know um, the patent office or the intellectual property board so that mm -hmm. is from separate individual organizations Okay. So, can you just uh, elaborate on what is the difference between personal property rights and uh, intellectual, uh, that is IPR, intellectual property rights? What is the main difference, ma'am? Because in personal, we'll be having the, uh, means, uh, the what to say, the thing uh, as a uh, property, but in, in uh, regarding uh, patency, we have the rights as a soft copy, not in terms of any uh, things in, uh, what to say, I'm not uh, sure. I, I don't know the exact wordings, ma'am. I think you got my point. I mean, uh, what I mean to say is, like if we have a private house as our own uh, personal property, so what is the difference mm -hmm. between having personal property rights and the uh, IPR mm -hmm. rights? Okay. So, Generally, property rights means anything with respect to a property that you own or your family owns, you might, uh, it can be a self-acquired property that you have earned through your own sources, or it can be an ancestral property which has devolved through your ancestors. So that is all covered under your general property rights. But intellectual property rights is something which is produced as a result of using your intellectual capacity. So if you have used uh, your uh, you know, knowledge and your ability, your skill, and you have uh, reproduced something which is a result of this, then it is called intellectual property. And you have a right over your intellectual property also. So that is called intellectual property rights. Uh, I, I hope uh, it, it is quite clear now. And uh, any other doubts with respect to this? Yes, ma'am, of course. Uh, now, uh, I just one minute. I would also like to add now, uh, intellectual property rights will be given for trademarks. So, trademarks is uh, the name, a brand name or a company name will be covered under trademarks. Second one is copyright. So, any literary work, dramatic work, diagram, photograph, drawing, etc., are all copyrights. This will be registered under copyrights. Your journal publications it can be registered under copyrights. Next one is patent. So any invention or a new product or a new process can be patented. There's something called a design registration. So any design that has been newly formulated, so that can be also registered under the caption of designs. Last one is geographical indications. So geographical indications is something which is, for example, a product from a particular geographical jurisdiction. Now, for example, Assam tea. You get Assam tea only in uh, produced from Assam. So all that is geographical in, uh, indication. Tirupati laddu, etc. And today also I saw in the news that uh, they want to have this uh, Tanjavur Nadaswaram, uh, you know, um, um, protected under the caption of uh, geographical indications. So these are all intellectual property rights. Thank you, ma'am. So, in the, uh, like, uh, properties are handovered to the next generation, like their uh, siblings or whatsoever. So in the mm -hmm. same way, can we hand over the IPR also, ma'am? Um, to some extent, yes. Not completely, but to some extent, yes. Uh, a patent is being granted for a period of 20 years. Now, this 20 years period is, is yours. Now, you have a patent certificate and it is valid for 20 years. Now, in this 20-year period, you can license it to anybody. You can assign it to anybody. You can, you, you know, you can grant them the right to use it. So, you can actually uh, make good money in this 20-year period by assigning it, licensing it, or granting the, uh, the right to use or reproduce also, you can do that. So just like property, you can also, you know, pass it on, uh, pa pass on your intellectual property to other individuals. Okay. So thank you, ma'am. Uh, apart from learning money, what are the other benefits, ma'am? Like, if like, uh, uh, promotes our uh, Indian currency or something like that. Mm, of course, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, see, um, if you want to, you know, uh, and if an innovation is being made, that innovation, how is it being used? And for what purpose it is being used? What is the objective of the in invention? It, it, you know, is it related to public health? If it is related to health, then yes, you know, uh, it, your, invention, uh, your invention has actually helped a lot of people in their health aspects. Or if it is related to, uh, in Siddha, it is mostly related to health only. So I'm just covering on the aspect of health. But in other, uh, you know, other innovations, you know, for say, example, a machine is being invented. So this machine is actually making your life easier. So apart from money, there is, it is also contributing, you know, to your time. And, uh, you know, if you're able to market your innovation to other countries, you know, you're also, uh, you know, making a mark of your country in other countries also. So that is also there. Well, these I are all the value sense. additions. These are all the value additions. Thank you, ma'am. Any other uh, points which you missed or uh, in your experience, you might have uh, thought to share to the Instead or uh, toddlers, so we can share now. Uh. Um, okay, so instead of creating a hurdle or you know having a question as to whether it is uh, you know uh, whether I need to get a patent for an innovation, I would always advise everybody to you know widen up your thoughts, make new innovations, have new inventions, get, you know get your product or you know work on it, do some research, get your product and then whether it is being patented or not it's a secondary question but at least it will help for the uh, you know, it, it'll be a help, uh, help or a, a, a boost to the society and for other individuals who are working in the particular area. So uh, I know a lot of people who have spent years on making a new product or, uh, uh, you know, um, having a new invention, but, uh, you know, some get frustrated and stop in between, but uh, no one should stop in between. You should just continue with your research, even if it takes years to complete, that's still okay. You can go ahead and at one point of time, it will reap good benefits. Ma'am, if uh, uh, we are doing a uh, PG project and submit it uh, in university and college libraries, mm -hmm. um, uh, if uh, anyone publish uh, uh, in journals or uh, they copy uh, our uh, our research work in their project. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we do uh, any copyright strike? Uh, of, this of course, that? of course. W what you can do is you can firstly send out a legal notice stating that it is uh, it is your work and what they have done is a, uh, a copying or a replication of your work and ask them for damages. You can sue them for damages. Okay. Because once a work is being published, a copyright will automatically exist, even though a particular application has not been filed with the copyright office. So as soon oh. as the work is uh, published, a copyright will automatically exist. And nobody has got a right to copy it without your knowledge and consent. And if uh, a reproduction of that work is being done with due reference to the work that you've already published, then yes, it, it can go ahead. But if a reference has not been done to your work, then you can definitely sue them for damages. Um, uh, some things uh, uh, to do as a research work and uh, we give that result, somebody copy the same thing uh, like that, ma'am, in so their definitions. Uh, th that is actually absolutely copying your stuff and uh, you have a right to definitely suit them. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pati Telegram, ma'am, for coming forward. Any other questions? I request all the participants to come forward if you have any doubts. Ipodi Kamala Dhamma. Thank you. Thank you. And I also see a lot of uh, comments. You know, I individually thank each and everyone for uh, you know for your comments and your appreciation. And thank you all.
in case you have any uh, specific questions later on even after the uh, the session is over uh, i i have given my email id to uh, dr maitri you can always contact her and get my email id and you can write to me anytime Thank you for your attention. Please uh, fill the feedback form so that you can claim your uh, e certificates for participating. And also the materials, whichever ma'am shares with me, I'll just uh, share in the mail. I think no more questions now. Is there anything to ask with ma'am? Please come forward and mute yourself. You can even uh, raise your questions in the chat box. It will be answered. I think you have uh, cleared and elaborated everything uh, regarding patency so no more questions if they have uh, they'll definitely approach you ma'am sure sure anytime thank you thank you so much so uh, all the very best and... yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much i now request uh, dr alamilu to come forward to share Good evening, one and all. Yes, ma'am. Is it audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. It's very clear. It is. It is audible. Okay, ma'am. Good evening, one and all. On behalf of Siddha Dedicated Forum, I would like to thank ma'am or Prem Raju Kumari, ma'am, who is an advocate and intellectual property right consultant. Ma'am explained about patenting of uh, Siddha drug and what is patent, what is the uh, type of patent, criteria in patent drug, procedure for obtaining patent drug, essential of patent drugs in a very clear and elaborative, understandable manner. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, uh, clearing the questions in a very simple and understandable manner. Thank you, ma'am. And I would like uh, thank our senior doctors uh, who are all participate in this session. Uh, thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you.